Welcome to the CE Pro Podcast. I'm Executive Editor Arlen Schweiger. This week, we're taking a look back at 2022 and a look ahead at 2023. CE Pro Senior Editor Bob Archer tells us how he made his Products of the Year selections, which cover a range of custom industry categories. And later, we outline why CE Pro pinpointed its five hot technology opportunities for integrators in 2023. What made the cut in these lists? Stay tuned in this week's podcast episode. As always, be sure to subscribe to CE Pro's YouTube channel and hit that like button on our videos or subscribe to the CE Pro podcast on Apple and Spotify and leave a review. Bob Archer, fellow editor for CE Pro Magazine. Thanks for joining our own CE Pro podcast this week. How are you doing, Bob? I'm doing great, Island. It's awesome to see you today. Yeah, so, you know, obviously, um, end of the year lists are always popular. Every year, you being our technology guru, I know you have a lot of fun when you compile your Bob Archer's top products of, uh, of every year. Uh, you did that again this year, so I thought it'd be fun to have as sort of an end of the year podcast. We have a, a look back at some of the products that came out in 2022, some that many of us saw at CEDIA Expo. And then also a look ahead to 2023, because you and me and Jason Knott, uh, we all worked on the recent five hot technologies uh, to watch for 2023 for integrators. Uh, these are always kind of a, an interesting sort of cross-section of, uh, of opportunities out there. And so I figured after we you know go through 2022 and a look back, we can segue and talk a, a bit about some of the themes for 2023, that might be great for integrators out there. So with that, uh, Bob, first off, you know, tell me a little bit about how you compile your your products of the year every year. I know you do a lot of product reviews. You scour the CD Expo floor. You read it and post a ton of press releases to CE Pro. What are some of the things that you look for? I, I, I suppose in a lot of ways, I'm no different than, than a dealer in that I try to look at things that I think are reliable when, when I look at a product, no disrespect to a new company, but I want to look at products that I believe are proven from proven companies that I think deliver high levels of performance based on whether it's my experience with that brand, um, my experience um, with the previous version of that product, if it's an ongoing series of 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 solutions like for an example we'll, we'll discuss the uh the sony projector uh, and the, the epson projector um those are a continuation of long-running product series and so um um i i try to put a lot of faith in my personal interaction with these products now of course you know you or i we can write about these products and we can attend trade events and see the products and interact with them or even review them in our own homes, but we can't see every product. So, um, you, you know, the bottom line is we try to do the best that we can based on the limited experience that we have with these products. So um, sure. it, it's many things. And I think, uh, you know, if I'm correct, obviously you interact a lot with integrators during CD Expo and, and you're on the phone with many of them, you know, throughout the year, I'm sure you, you even grab some feedback from them if they, you know, drop a line about, hey, did, did you get to see this product? Did you get to try this product out? Uh, I know, I know, I think you value their commentary as well uh, every year. Yeah, they, dealers bring a, an entirely different perspective than what you or I, and, and, and the, the most obvious example I can think of is that we may try a product on our home and we might love it. We might even love it to the point where we ask the manufacturer if we can buy it. But that's a short glimpse into a small window of that product's lifespan. Dealers are dealing with these products over the entire life expectancy of these products. So they, they can look at these products with a longer term view. And if the product proves to be reliable, they're more apt to go with it. And we, we can't always get that kind of perspective. Sure. Plus, I know certainly we have to look at things like uh, integration features you yes. know, in one of our homes. Uh, you know, I don't have a whole house control system. I believe you do, but it might not be compatible with everything out there. So that's certainly a thing. I know when we do our reviews, I know we think about things like installation features, you know, the flexibility when it comes to yeah. projector placement, things like that. So yeah, there's there's a lot of 
certainly a lot of things to think about. So uh, yeah, so let's dive in. Let me let me share the screen, and you can kind of walk us through a little bit about how these came about. So I think you chose about a dozen this year, and like you said, some of them were continuations, and some of them were completely new. So let's check out the slideshow, and okay. we'll kind of go. I don't know if these are in alphabetical order, but uh, let's figure out. Um, to start uh, from there. So this one is familiar. I definitely saw this at the expo and it's certainly um, among the, you know, jaw dropping <laughs> displays that was that was there. Tell us a little bit about the C-Seed N1 outdoor folding display, Bob. Yeah, um, C-Seed is a French company and we, we had been covering them for, at this point, several years now, I can think back to uh, they they partnered with L Acoustics in the past, a company I really respect in the audio field. But um, to see the products in person um, at Cedar this past September, when you turn the corner and walk down that aisle, your eye was drawn to that big display. It was so bright. Uh, it was so big. It couldn't, you couldn't help but be drawn to it and getting up close to it and then seeing it fold and unfold and everything. It's pretty awesome. If you're in the, you know, high tech and um, you want an outdoor display, the CC line has to rise to the top of your list. Financially, of course, is another consideration, but uh, if cost isn't really an object for you, it's got to be at the top of your list. Uh, based on the brightness, the vividness of the, the the colors, and the total package of it folding and unfolding, I don't know what your thoughts were. Yeah, if you're looking for a unique uh, a unique display for uh, you know an ultra affluent clientele, right? CC, we've heard about them in the past. I think one of the first products I remember them or partners was I think they partnered with Porsche on yes. products, which gives you a little bit of an idea, and certainly. Combining that with the ability to fold it up, hide it in the ground, all those kind of things. Um, yeah, designers, you know, look for look for dealers who are uh, want something completely different for a client, especially if they're looking, you know, have the space in a backyard where they can they can really impress a lot of people. And then it's one of those types of products where, hey, if they're in a neighborhood where one person has this, and you know, they're going to host a party outside. Some of the neighbors will be buzzing about it and they'll be wanting them as well, I would say. Absolutely agree. Uh, Crestron, certainly they came out with numerous products in 2022 and you picked an interesting one. And, and I would say that I would have picked this one as well if I was looking at, uh, you know, picking out one of their announcements this year. It's a category that, uh, you know, really I feel like they had to get into and, and it looked like their debut will certainly be a, a nice entry in, into the product category. Yeah, Arlen, I had I had been kind of under NDA for a while. I, I had attended Crestron's road trip into Boston in 2021. I, I can't remember the exact mm -hmm. time frame, but they were displaying the LED lighting products and they were like, you can't write about this. I'm like, oh, bummer. But, um, you know, the, they ended up debuting it, I want to say, in February of 2022. And um, I, I think it's a great solution for a number of reasons. One, it's fully compatible with Crestron Home, which I, I admittedly I have in my ha house. I love it. Home is an awesome product. And just seeing that their booth that CDO was powered by Home validates the power of that platform but to have a, a led product line that integrates natively into the home platform i think is an absolute win for dealers and on top of it they can do all of the things that people are looking for like circadian rhythms and uh, highlighting artwork and architectural elements within their home spaces it's a total home run from prestron right certainly lots of different form factors uh, it, definitely a, a win all around for their dealers. All right, moving on for the next one. Uh, now, this is an interesting one. Uh, so Dolly, which uh, a Lenbrook brand, correct me if I'm wrong there, Bob. And you might have some interesting insights on this one, if I recall correctly, based on a, a trip that you took this year. 
Yeah, yes. Uh, this summer, Dali was nice enough to invite a handful of press people to Denmark to get a look at the speaker. Now, they took us through a couple day process, and it's not only the speaker, but the story behind the speaker. Dali has committed itself to using local labor, local materials local manufacturing, local everything to try to develop its product line now, instead of outsourcing, whether it's labor and manufacturing or whatever, they want to bring everything back to Denmark. So um, this is one of the first products from the company to kind of realize its renewed efforts there. On top of it, it's a flagship loudspeaker product that they spent a couple of years in R&D developing. Um, I heard the speaker over the course of a couple of days with a number of different amps, and um, I was really impressed. I, I know it's an expensive speaker. I'm not scoffing at the price tag, but I will say in that rarefied audiophile flagship loudspeaker uh, realm, it's it's a bargain. Uh, it's It's smooth sounding it's big it's airy uh it's everything you would expect from an audiophile speaker uh they really did some nice engineering work to to get this product into the market right and the bonus is of course you've got that uh, that great you know scandinavian design uh that comes that comes with it and the the scandinavian sustainability story which certainly we know um that that's a, a very large emphasis in uh, in that part of the world now I know we're going moving on to projectors, and I know, uh, like you said, the Epson being a continuation of products that you've that you've reviewed in the past, you've experienced in the past, so you know a, a lot about uh, Epson's lineup, especially compared to previous generations. So tell us a little bit about this uh, about this latest one, the Pro Cinema LS twelve thousand. Yeah, uh, I think this is a product. In fact, we both had talked about when it ha was announced that we were eyeing this. Like, wow, that looks like a pretty cool product from Epson. Um, the twelve thousand is is a continuation. I would say from the product that I have in my home, the the sixty forty. Unlike the sixty forty, they've updated it quite a bit, including its uh, light engine. Um, the LS twelve thousand has a laser light engine. So in terms of uh, uh, maintenance. Uh, there's a lot less maintenance involved with this because you don't have to replace bulbs with it. Um, it's dealer friendly. It calibrates great. Um, and uh, considering the price point that it, it it comes into the market at, it offers a lot of performance value. It's hard not to look at the Epson products, including the LS12000, um, and not come away impressed and saying, oh, maybe I would get that for myself you have to go much higher in cost, I think, to oftentimes get higher levels of performance. Yeah, I think that company certainly always offers a, a great value proposition. And I know you have uh, have more projection coming in later. You know, I'll throw out that I've I've reviewed several LG products in the projection category over the last couple of years. And aside from being, you know, great uh, at throwing images, I will say that uh, one thing that's uh, I I find cool about projectors these days is that you know with something that has like they have their web OS uh, and they're able to you know basically become all in one types of products because you can get all the streaming tied in that you want to the product uh, you know through the the web engine as opposed to just you know you can make fewer connections those way uh, with some of those products so I don't know if Epson has that um, in terms of any kind of connected uh, streaming devices to the displays, or did you were you already connecting those to the, external the pro, sources? The Pro Cinema stuff doesn't, but I believe their laser TVs do and show yeah. the ultra short throws. Yeah, because I'd say that's definitely something to consider these days as well. It's just uh, all the access to the entertainment, and I would say, speaking of the entertainment, certainly uh, you know streaming is one thing, but when you want to talk about bit for bit reproduction. Uh, you can't be Kaleidoscape. And Bob, I know you've done a lot with some of their products as well and are an evangelist for sure. Tell us a little bit about the uh, 88 terabyte uh, behemoth server product here. Yeah, thanks, Alan. Yeah, the, you know, Kaleidoscape's, you know, the Ferrari of home, uh, home entertainment source 
products, it, it doesn't get any better. Like you had said, it's bit for bit. So un, unlike the streaming services that you, you're coming in with a, a compressed signal and you may not be getting all of the content the way that Hollywood envisioned it, Kaleidoscape doesn't do any of that. It's uncompressed. And I like the 88 terabyte version server here or, or a storage device because obviously with a system like Kaleidoscape, the more you can store, the better. And this gives you the ability to, you know, the store in your home on call, you, you know, a lot of movies and concerts and all the stuff that, you know, people want at the highest quality levels. So you, you can't go wrong with that. And uh, nobody does it like Kaleidoscape. So there's... yeah, you've reviewed the products. You can attest to the quality, certainly the, uh, the, you know, 4k resolution, the Atmos audio, uh, you know, I definitely have, we've wrote, we've run one of your recent reviews of their, their products, but certainly just the quality itself, Bob, right. Uh, it, it doesn't, it doesn't get much better. Yeah. You know, in closing real quick, Alan, I'll say that if Kaleidoscape didn't live up to its billing, none of these companies would be using its products as the core piece of its demo systems in all the top demos you go to at CD or, or probably ISE when it comes to resi stuff, what what's in the system it's a kaleidoscape uh source component right i believe they were in 30 something rooms at yeah. cd expo <laughs> so uh so i had mentioned lg from the projector standpoint uh they they've been i think it's safe to say the leader on the oled side uh for several for several years now i believe they're about to enter their uh 10th year since uh you know the first generation came out and Bob, wow, 97 inches on on an OLED product. Uh, you know, that's definitely a, a display of the year type of uh, type of offering. This this was another one, Arlen, that had caught my eye. I was walking down the aisle in Seedier, and I had heard the buzz about uh, the size and the fact that LG had an uh, OLED this big. And uh, coincidentally, I was walking down the aisle, and I was like. I walked past that big LG and I, 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 I walked back to it to get a, a better look at it. And I came away really impressed. And um, I love the idea of a big OLED like this because some people don't want projectors in their homes for people that want a big screen cinema like experience that want a really high performance product. It's tough to argue with, you know, this LG product, they, they set the standard with OLED and uh, LG delivers some of the best images in the home video market. So, you yeah, know, 97, think... 97 inches. Uh, that's, I mean, that's basically projection size that you're talking about here yeah. to have that in an OLED display. Uh, I saw it as well uh, at CED Expo and it is definitely a head turner. So let's go from there to, uh, to webcam the kind of thing that makes these interviews uh, possible for us over Zoom and other platforms. And certainly, uh, as you mentioned here, you know, because the, the, the work from home, a lot of companies are doing kind of a hybrid model where people are coming in a couple of days, they're working from home a couple of days. The, you know, the home conferencing setups are still important. So we, there are a lot of these out there and you like the, the Logitech one. Yeah, I, for a couple of reasons. It's easy to set up, it's reasonably priced, and it's from a proven company in the collaboration space um, with, you know, as you had said, more, more people are working from home than ever before. We're sitting in our homes right now working from home, it, whether it's full work from home like we are or in some kind of a hybrid schedule. And I think that you know, it's important for people to put the best foot forward and more and more people realize that. And in order to do that, you can make really targeted, smart uh, um, product acquisitions. And this falls into that, that scenario where, all right, I need something to upgrade my conferencing game. I don't want to spend a lot of money. There you got it. There you go. Yep. Uh, definitely reliable company, uh, proven video quality. Looks like a, a good product in, in that category as well. Let's move from there over to 
uh, to audio and OSD audio Nero amplifiers. This was a, uh, uh, a recent field test that we included in our print issue. I believe it's uh, it'll people will be able to find it in the January issue. Uh, Bob, tell us a little bit about OSD audio and the and the Nero. I know I think you had some very good words to say about it in your review of these uh, of these products. It's a it's part of a lineup for them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, over the past several years, and we, we've covered OSD for for several years now. Um, they've been growing their product line. You know, like they started with outdoor audio. Um, they moved into whole house audio, and uh, more recently they've released a line of multi-channel amplifiers and uh this narrow line uh provides dealers with uh three five or seven channels depending on the configuration that you want and it delivers uh the products deliver good clean power um for i i think of immersive audio today channels are so important with immersive audio you need those high channels whether it's two or four and to be able to do it with, with with two amplifiers at a reasonably cost that won't sacrifice sound quality, I think provides amazing value for today's homeowners. And it provides dealers with something they can turn to and know that will deliver on the promise that they're providing. Right. And if they've used OSD audio before, you know, they they can count on the type of uh the type of quality that they're that they're getting into there and and you know start using them for some different kind of applications. So let's move from there to a company that certainly everyone in the channel has heard of. They have recently come up with uh, some variations on their sound bars. And I think you got to spend some time with the Sonos Ray uh, as, as one of those, which was uh, a new one for them this, this year. Yeah, Arlen, this is an affordable product. It's under 300 bucks. And I think people tend to look at Sonos and their sound bars and, and tend to think, well, oh, maybe they're starting to creep up there in price. Well, I think they came into the market with the Ray at 279, I believe. And it it provides a simple way to upgrade any TV sound. And uh, on top of it, you know, it provides another zone of whole house audio. Um, I even used it, in fact, and I loved it in this application. Uh, at one point, I moved it into my dining room to listen to the music, and it sounded great. It's I, I loved it as a uh, you know a zone within my my complete Sono system. Uh, so it can be used in a number of different ways. It's not you don't have to be tied to it as a sound bar. You could use it because it's got a small enough footprint where you can put it in in any room, especially if you don't maybe have the height necessary to put uh, a Sonos like the one or something like that. Uh, so, um, you, right, you know, some, some very good points there. I was going to say that about the small footprint compared to some other sound bars out there. You could see, it, you know, it fits right in in this, you know, kind of a rec room application. But like you said, if you just want a Sonos product, you know, maybe something that's even a, a, a little bit bigger than, you know, one of their standard type of bookshelf speakers. And you get the bonus of having the whole house system. You get the, the user interface and all that. It definitely works, I think, as, a, as an audio only solution in, a, in one of those secondary type rooms. I think that's a great application for it. So let's move on from there uh, to Sony. And you've spent some time with uh, various Sony projectors over the year. I know you always have, uh, you know, kind of use them as the benchmark of uh, home projection. And certainly we've covered them. And, you know, granted, Sony, it's not just the projection. It's that they have that entire chain from the pro system on home to the consumer entertainment system. And Bob, you know, they uh, I know you mentioned uh, Getting to see this and some of the new ones that they in, that they showed at CD Expo toward the end of the year, so you had to have been impressed by uh, yet another Sony projector into your mix here. Yeah, you know, Arlen, what I really liked about this, and you, you know, I've been fortunate over the years to try a lot of the Sony projectors in my house, and every year it seems like, or every incarnation of these products, it seems like they're delivering more performance at a lower cost. So um, this projector five years ago might have been 40 grand, you know, and yeah, I, I get it. It's a lot of money, but you know, the 7,000 here delivers 
really high levels of video performance, you know, re really reference quality that if you're building a, uh, a killer home theater, you want something to really impress your friends and your family, uh, you can absolutely start with the 7,000 and have uh, no regrets about that. Right. And we know that with Sony also, the, the technology goes down to the entry products in the line, which I think for their newest products, I want to say they're down to what, about six grand maybe now for me? Yeah, I believe 5,000, the, the, the uh, 5,000 ES now is. Right. Uh, so if you're yeah. just looking to get into a nice performance, native 4K Sony, you know, relying on that, uh, like you said, that, that, uh, that proven technologies from a company that's been there from the start. Yeah, I don't think you can go real wrong with uh, with the latest iteration of Sony products out there. Yeah, abs absolutely. Um... All right, here's a SVS. I think um, you saw them at Cedia Expo as well. And they've got some wireless speakers uh, that they're adding into the mix. Certainly known for uh, their low end, but their subwoofers. Uh, Bob, tell us where these SVS speakers uh, fall in and what impressed you about them. Uh, yeah, yeah, Arlen, the, I've been talking to SVS about this particular pair of speakers for a while now. Um, I, I get, I've had to keep my mouth quiet. It's amazing that I'm able to, to keep it zipped that long. But um, I, I really, I, I love the company's passion for audio products. I love the fact that now that they've built this fan base, and they really do have a fan base in the consumer market, uh, that... Now they're targeting dealers and they're bringing that same value to dealers so they can bring these components into their clients' homes. Um, but with these particular products, I, I really see a product that dealers could use as a uh, an AV solution where you can connect the TV or a cable box, gaming system. Um, you know, you could stream to it, you know, with your phone um, using, you know, um, Google or, um, you know, Google cast or uh, Bluetooth or whatever, um, the inputs, the front interface, it's the product, the speakers are loaded with features and they deliver, you know, just like the company has, is known for it, high levels of, of value and performance. And, um, um, I could really see, I, I see the, Arlen, I see these speakers as being like representative of what we're going to see from the next era of speakers in the home. They're small, they're powered, mm -hmm. they bundle a ton of features in and you can do nearly anything with them. Yeah, I would, I would echo that sentiment. I feel like there are so many good, smaller powered speakers on the market now. And, you know, they're incorporating some of the technology into them. I'll say for, for one of the products uh, that really impressed me on the audio side at CD Expo, that was a powered speaker that has some of these, is uh, that company, the new company, Lyth Audio, that they're from the UK, and they're coming into the US market as well. And so they, I know they have a Wi-Fi version, they do Bluetooth, people can cast you know, for, from Google, they can do AirPlay, and it's really a convenience thing and they can do it. Uh, I think they do in ceiling speakers as well as uh, outdoor speakers. So I'll throw that in there as well on the, the audio side. So continuing just, I think this is the last product of yours that we haven't covered yet, I believe. And that I think is so. Yeah. This uh, beefy AV receiver from Integra, always one of the leaders in the CE pro brand analysis. And they've got a good one here with the new DRX. Uh, 9.2 channel receiver. Yeah, our, uh, I this was a pro. I needed to replace my uh, AV receiver because it was getting a little long in the tooth. And I had done a deep dive on all the AVRs that were out there in the market. And I kept coming back to this model Integra. And I contacted the company and they were really nice to me. The team over at, at Klipsch were really uh, nice to me. I put this in my system. And um, I couldn't believe the number of features that it bundles at a price point that's really pretty approachable for, you know, these days, immersive audio, 9.2 9 in particular, um, you, you know, you're typically ta talking over $2,000. Um, the the 3.4 here from Integra comes in well under that. It, it includes Dirac Live, 
Wish, um, is is the Cadillac of room correction systems. And um, it, it's another one of those value products that delivers at a high level. Yeah, certainly feature loaded, uh, I would say about this one. Like you say, it's a, it's a great value proposition. If you're putting in a home theater these days, you're going to want the Atmos. Uh, the Dirac certainly is a bonus. I know, I believe, I don't know if you've used it in your home system, but, uh, you know, I know you've been, you've ex certainly experienced your share of room correction technologies and seen demos over the years. Uh, it it sound like, uh, sounds like this would be a great way for people to go who really want to get into uh, good affordability with, uh, you know, outstanding performance. Yeah, it and it, it, yeah, it, it has immersive audio. It handles all the the popular video formats too, and that's important to point out too that um, you know the market's evolving so quickly. Th this should keep you good to go in terms of video for the next few years. Anyway, we we don't want to speak too soon and put our foot in our mouth, but for the time being, yeah, you're good to go on the video side with this. And yeah, the Dirac. Um, it, included it's a great price point to get all that stuff all in one package yeah and and certainly when you talk about you know future proofing a system uh obviously when it comes to av receivers you're going to see uh you know some new features coming on those every few years now in terms of features and technologies and innovations uh, i wanted to segue from there so we had all a lot of these products that came out in 2022 and what we wanted to do also on this podcast episode Let's take a look ahead to 2023. Now, Bob, you worked a lot on our five hot technologies um, opportunities for integrators. It's something that we do as part of our uh, state of the industry coverage every January. So the issue is going to be coming out very soon, probably around the, the, you know, the same timing of this podcast. Uh, Bob, why don't we quickly go over the what we found as the, you know, pegged as the top five technologies going into the next year. And we can start speaking of displays. You know, you had uh, the C seed in there on the you know gigantic uh, LED displays. Uh, let's start with the first topic, and that was uh, micro LEDs, which I know, you know, we both saw all over the floor. I know I saw it at uh, Quantum Media Systems, uh, LG. You know, we had the OLED there, but they also had the new the magnet that's coming in at uh, 136 inches. Um, Bob, clearly uh, micro LED is is having its moment in the custom uh, integration industry. Yeah, Alan, it, it's interesting. Y you know, I believe that we first saw micro LED back in 2018, kind of start to open the door into the resi. It's it's come from the commercial market and commercial applications, but it, um, you, you know, high end consumers, homeowners are seeing the the benefits of these technologies. And um, so they've made their way into the resi market. And now that door is completely open and we're seeing all these different manufacturers, including, you know, the big guns, Sony, LG, Samsung, and um, the performance that these products can deliver um, really step up to meet the standards that Hollywood and the video files, the, uh, the old silvers and the Robert Zons, you know, our video guy panel, it's, it's industrial. It's the, the products that they aspire to own. So. Um, right. They're really gaining a lot of momentum, but also a lot of respect, I would say among the, among the video file crowd in terms of the capabilities. And it's a, it's an interesting you know, alternative these days to two-piece projection. And it yeah. sounds uh, from your talks with the, with Jason of Meridio that it, it's only going to get better and become a more viable option as some of the prices, which admittedly are pretty pretty sky high right now. But as those start to drop, I think we'll see it more and more, which, you know, I think we're seeing as a potential for, you know, in 2023. Yeah, really, not only the performance aspect, but you know, another trend that we see in the home video market is that TVs are continually getting bigger and bigger. You know, try looking for a 32-inch TV these days. They're, they're, they're as rare as like dinosaurs or whatever. You, you know, you, you don't see them anymore. So TVs have gotten bigger and micro LED kind of feeds right into all of that. So it's, you know, the sky's the limit for the next several years. Sure. Now, speaking of TV, uh... 
you know, something that's always been around as as an alternative to people, uh, people, especially when they were, you know, even cutting the cord before there was such as glut of streaming services. But that's over the air and uh, otherwise known as OTA and ATSC 3.0 uh, and next gen TV. This is something that is a, a viable solution um, and something a bit different that's going on there as an alternative to streaming, to cable, to satellite. Uh, why is this an opportunity? And for those who don't really know all that much about it, Bob, uh, what's sort of the 30,000 foot view of what it is? ATSC 3.0 is the next generation of broadcast TV that we're going to see. Uh, it's already rolling out. It's already been rolled out and, and it's coming to more and more cities. I believe it's in 55 cities right now. Um, it and they're adding city, cities literally daily, all the top markets. And, and the particular spec provides for 4K, it provides for Atmos, but what a lot of people will really like about it, it provides for interactivity. So say for an example, you have on your favorite team, the Patriots, Bruins, whatever, you know, if you're a Boston guy like me, but, um, and you wanna, you wanna pull up David Pasternak's stats, you know, you can, in theory, pull up uh, his stats and see how many goals he scored, or uh, maybe pull up, you know, Matt Jones and see how many uh, passes he's thrown in a game or whatever. And um, so th th there's a lot of uh, ability for consumers to kind of customize their TV experience based on the technologies that are embedded into the format. Very cool. So it'll be very uh, interesting to see how that grows this year and what some kind, some kind of opportunities that we'll see from that interactivity, uh, how much it catches on. Now, moving on from there, from displays and content to the power. Uh, the, you know, the power category has been very interesting over the last several years, and now we're seeing EV charging as another potential um, addition to it, where we have, you know, conditioning, power management, um, you know, uh, UPS devices, things of that nature. Uh, so Savant has gotten big into the, the category with its Savant Power brand, and they just, uh, they had recently announced uh, EV charging uh, stations, correct? And that's yes. kind of along the lines of, it's sort of, where is this as an opportunity heading into 2023? Uh, the other power categories have certainly picked up over the past few years, and I'm guessing that's one of the reasons why, you know, you think, well, EV is going to fall right in that category, in that trend. Yeah, if you, it's it's really interesting that if you look, you know, a few years ago, Tesla was probably the brand in terms of electric cars. Well, now there's more electric car options out there and there's going to be more, excuse the pun, down the road. And um, there's more and more products coming into the EV market to, to allow homeowners to plug these uh, these cars into. And if you look, depending on whose numbers you look at, the, the sales of electric cars are going to grow exponentially over the next several years. And in fact, um, I, I want to say, and I, I can't remember the numbers specifically, but they're going to roughly by like 2032, I think, or 2035, they're going to equate to roughly a third of all car sales. So it, you think about that and the millions of cars that are sold, that it means there's an enormous opportunity for dealers to support the homeowners that are buying these electric cars. Right. And I think as we've covered uh, on CE Pro and, and I believe, you know, firms such as Parks Associates have, have covered in their research, uh, people who tend to buy these types of vehicles are also they also tend to be the smart home adopters, uh, smart home device adopters. So that's something that just, I think, inherently comes with it as an opportunity for pros would be to package it with, hey, you're going to get a whole Savant system with all the bells and whistles, you know, and basically roll it kind of in, into that type of sale as, as it would be. Uh, that is definitely, I think, would be picking up momentum along with wellness. And we covered wellness again for 2023. And this time, you know, we're throwing the, the, the bullseye at the indoor air quality uh, pillar of wellness in particular, and also you, a couple of some whole, whole home uh, air systems that have come out, air filtration, some different options that are coming out there, some more enterprise grade, 
Bob, what, you know, what were you saying on the IAQ front in terms of, you know, what to expect from next year? It, it's early, you know, you know, a few years ago, Alan, uh, when the industry first started to focus on wellness, a lot of people were looking at circadian rhythms and lighting. And yes, that's a piece of the pie. There are so many pieces of this pie and we're looking at the next piece right now, which is indoor air quality. And it might even gross people out to think about, you know, the dust and, and everything, but it all contributes to um, a healthy indoor environment. And there are a growing amount of products out there, whether they're the in-room systems, I term them as in-room systems versus whole house. If there's another term out there um, that I'm unaware of, there could be, but um, I, I think of the in-room systems as those standalone devices that you can plug in and, and set up. And a lot of the big name major consumer electronic brands, including LG and iRobot offer products, but there are also um, large whole house systems that can um, clean entire homes from big names that you would expect in that industry, you know, including train and carrier and, and, and whatnot, but it's an emerging market for, for CE pros. Yeah, definitely. And, and I'm, uh, added into the coverage, I know, uh, like the Brown Newtone, they have their overture system that came yes. out, which they consider a whole home system. It's you know integrates with other technology with third parties. It looked like a you know a great system for CE pros to get into. And I'll say on top of that as well, it's that don't forget central vac because that is always a category that uh, you know has been touting the benefits for years and years on the side of uh, when it comes to filtration, when it comes to um, the HEPA products out there and just making, you know, a great profit margin for dealers, because we know it's always been that way for that category too. If for those who've had success in it, uh, you know, they have that wellness story to tell now as well, because more people are focused on it. Yeah. And, and, and the amount of people will only grow as people start to learn about these technologies and, and these solutions. We're very early in the home wellness market right now. And in 10 years, we may look back and say, it's amazing. It started from this point. Sure. Now, uh, one last thing I wanted to get into was our fifth one, which was something that, you know, I had highlighted and I know you saw tons of products because you look at, you look at industrial design every year. Uh, but just between feature sets and between the way that products are being more discreet in their design, they're hiding other technology with the design, and the way the LED fixtures are coming in and being able to accent other things in design. Um, to me, it was everywhere at CD Expo. So we pegged it as our fifth uh, product technology opportunity, let's say, for next year. Um, so, Bob, you know, I know. Uh, we both saw lots of stuff uh, at CD Expo. A few things that really kind of knocked me out um, were, you know, seeing a company like Origin Acoustics pair with Bang & Olufsen on uh, this Bayo Sound home theater. This is a sound bar that, you know, compared to some of the sound bars on the market, you know, you're not looking at too many that could produce something like this. So, you know, between Bang & Olufsen and Leon Speakers still doing their thing with custom sound bars year after year, you know, there's something on the audio side that I saw a large design influence. Um, yeah. And I saw it a lot on the, the lighting side. You know, I would say this is probably among my favorite products and a couple of companies did this at the show. Um, this was Prolux by American. There's environmental lights I saw as well where these LED diodes that can be used to light up uh, backsplashes, countertops, things like that. And, you know, in looking at uh, getting pros together with architects and designers and having more of those conversations and getting projects earlier in, um, in the process and the life cycle there, uh, those are the kind of things that I saw that certainly stood out to me. I I agree, and um, I, I think of a, like a newer audio company, like Magna Audio from Brazil, their products right. are so beautiful. They're right. elegant. They're, they're eye and I catching. had them on here as well. Yeah. And yeah. I, think I we... noticed the, the in your slides. Um, I think in, in the audio category, 
they're going to be one of the brands to keep an eye on, as well as companies like CAF and Meridian, of course, who have always em emphasized industrial design. Sure. Um, you, you know, I think the more that um, the industry matures, the more that homeowners care about how these products look within their interior spaces. The days of black boxes and big coffin size speakers, they're getting or uh, going further and further in the rear view mirror. It's design is an, is as important as functionality and uh, performance. Right. And I notice it in every, you know, basically everything from the interior extending all the way down to the gate gate control from a company like Dorberg. So you're talking about security products that are just really um, can be can be nice, can be configured with different finishes, um, you know, just to really enhance the look of a house from the moment that, you know, someone drives up to it, basically, uh, you know, seeing that all over the place. Yeah, I, I design and, and maybe this goes back to what Apple started, you know, years ago with the iPod that, People were so struck by the beautiful lines of of iPod, and Apple has always put an emphasis on it too. That it, it it awoke an entire movement within the electronics industry. That yes, design matters. Yeah, definitely. I would say that's uh, it's certainly um, something that has impacted everything. And then over the years, we've seen that evolution. I know we've certainly looked at uh, the AV products over the years that fit that uh, fit that mold. And, you know, when you look at a product like the, a 97 inch OLED or micro LEDs, things like that, uh, certainly the opportunities are expanding. So we'll, you know, continue to see that in 2023. I don't think it's going to go backwards. I think we're only going forwards with design. So on that note, Bob Archer, uh, Senior Editor, CE Pro. Uh, thank you so much for joining the CE Pro podcast. It was really fun talking about your products of the year, as well as CE Pro's picks for the hot technology opportunities in 2023. Bob, thanks for being on the podcast. Arlen, thank you and have a great day.